Welcome to Come and See, your podcast for finding truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. With host and founder, Richard Case, and co-host and retreat leader, Kathy Riccone. Join us every weekday at this time to discuss news, spend time in the Word, and receive answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. And now your host, Richard Case. But good morning, Kathy. Um, how are you doing today? Good morning. Doing great. How about you? You just, you just said that uh, in New Hampshire, you have to take care of mosquitoes. But, uh, what, do they, what do they do up there? We do. In the summertime up here, mosquitoes can be an issue because there's a lot of water up here. We, yeah. have, we have a lot of lakes and rivers and that sort of thing and then even so also wetlands and so like in our we have a couple acres at our house and we do have every couple of weeks in the summer we have mosquito shield to come and they spray the perimeter of our yard um, and that actually forms a barrier it's interesting they don't have to spray the whole yard they just have to spray the perimeter of it mm -hmm. And then our yard becomes like a little haven. When the kids were young, it was interesting. Kids could literally come in and they'd be on the other side of our driveway and they'd be eaten alive and they would step in the perimeter and they would be covered. Nice. So, <laughs> but it is a necessary thing. Yeah, so you learned how to do it. So do you, um, uh, do you have a screen porch out there? We do not, we don't. do not. Okay. Yeah, a lot of people do. We just, we don't, we have. And with the pool out there and everything, it, that's another reason for us it's so important to keep the bugs free um, because we do have the pool out there and they're drawn to water and that sort of thing so yeah. very important and around here um, triple E is also an issue because of the number of horses in New Hampshire and so triple E can be carried by the mosquitoes as well as you know all the other things that they can carry so spraying for mosquitoes and ticks actually we get we're sprayed for ticks because 50 percent of the ticks up here carry limes mm. so again you you know be cognizant of where you're at and put that little protection in. but hey we treat the yard and all as well yep it's good colorado uh we uh we're fortunate because we don't have much mosquitoes we there's some around but uh we have we don't have screened in porches so we can go outside of the right. deck and we don't we don't get you know bitten very much and it's uh, right. pretty pleasant to have really not hardly any bugs at all we have some yeah you know, we that, enjoyed uh when we were out visiting we were at your daughter's house and we enjoyed sitting out on her deck every evening totally bug free and nobody had to spray for that to happen no that's right <laughs> we, we get to do that on our own but only because we do preventatively have it sprayed <laughs> right it was pretty uh, spectacular view wasn't it Oh, it was gorgeous. Yeah. Too. So much fun. Yeah, we watched we watched the sunset there a few nights. Yeah. Yeah, in the mountains. It's beautiful. Well, we've been talking about uh, the covenant. Um, I'm going to bless you to make you a blessing, God says. And we've gone through the uh, discussion of uh, difficult circumstances uh, about you know, our emotion and our energy and the difficulty with that. And we actually have a question uh, that came in uh, that's, uh, you know, has a kind of a tangent uh, uh aspect to it but it says that um, uh, you know you and I have talked about enjoying heaven mm -hmm. uh, and there's going to be a joy in heaven and celebration and life you know eternal um, he said well how do how might we enjoy heaven when some of our loved ones and this would be you know parents siblings children spouses even spouses children mm -hmm. friends uh, uh, don't accept Christ and they're not going to be there because they'll be mm -hmm. separated eternally and living, you know, living in hell. So not only are they not there, but we we understand that they're not, you know, they're living a life of torment, uh, mm -hmm. which is, you know, the part of the aspect of it. And and the question is, well, won't we we be sad about right. that? Uh, now, uh, first of all, let's talk about on the human condition. Um, if we have somebody that we know that is. Um, refusing you know to follow anything good and, and causing themselves trouble mm -hmm. um, you know maybe they're into uh, you know uh, addiction or they're just miserable or they're unhappy or they're worried or they're anxious or their their life just isn't pleasant um, and you know if they would just take the step mm -hmm. uh, that their life could change because actually what we're saying about the covenant and and that's what 
uh, even last time when we said you're, you're to go out and offer the kingdom, it's really we're offering the covenant life. Now, it, it, right. it, it starts with and is centered around our relationship with Christ. But Absolutely. it's not just a ticket to heaven or salvation as an event. It's inviting them to the kingdom. Right. Which God which says, is tell living life with him. Here living on life. Earth. And you're going to be blessed. So that kingdom. when yeah. I when I come across people uh, and they're generally telling me about I've got a problem. I got a I've got a deep conflict. I've got a double bind. I've got mm-hmm. a lot of opposition and difficulty with uh, relatives or with uh, relationships. And financially, I've, I've made a mistake. There's always something that is causing them you know, stress. Mm-hmm. Um, and my comment is, well, um, I guarantee you that God can resolve this. Right. And you can live the life of the covenant. God will bless you to make you a blessing. Um, and of course, that kind of surprises them. Like, <laughs> Well, that's never happened so far, and I don't see a lot of Christians around having that. Mm-hmm. And it sounds to me, and they, they actually say this, sounds to me you're you're the prosperity gospel. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're just kind of saying stuff that isn't so. And I said, no, I'm not talking about that at all, because I'm not talking about wealth. I'm talking about blessing. Mm-hmm. Um, and Peace blessing, and joy. blessing and, is joy yeah. and freedom and wonder, mm-hmm. and, and it will be financial freedom. And the issue that you have, God will resolve it because he promises that. Um, and you can trust it. Um, mm-hmm. Would you like to come? Um, and a lot of people basically say, nah, no. Um, mm-hmm. I don't believe it. I'm not even willing to pursue it. And, of course, my comment always back is, well, <laughs> how's that working out for you? <laughs> you know, right. And, and uh, well, yeah, but, and okay. Um, so there's, there is a sadness mm-hmm. on the human condition when you know that it could be this way mm-hmm. and they don't have a heart to go that way, right? it does bring grief. It does bring sadness. So, Absolutely. So we experience that, which is why the question comes up. Mm-hmm. Well, is that going to continue? How could that not continue in, right. in eternity? Because we're, there's going to be a lot of sadness that we're going to know about because there's people that I had relationship with and, and we said we're that gonna, will not be there. They're not going to be there and I know where they are and it's not going to make me sad. Um, that's a legitimate question uh, because mm-hmm. in the human condition, our, our answer would be, yeah, uh, you're going to be sad. Well, mm-hmm. let's see what the, let's see what the word has to say and then uh, how we respond to that. But go to uh, Revelation mm-hmm. uh, 21. Now this is talking about uh, the new heaven and the new earth, which means we're living in eternity now with God after the first earth was, was uh, destroyed. Uh, and we've talked through this in the end times, uh, tribulation, Christ comes, a thousand year reign on earth with other humans. At the end of that, uh, everything's destroyed and a new heaven and a new earth is done. And it describes basically eternity of how we're going to spend it with with God. And and there's some cool Mm -hmm. things about it, but go ahead and read it. Uh, 21, 1 through uh, 7. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, no, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write for these words, right for these words are true and faithful and he said to me it is done i am the alpha and the omega the beginning and the end i will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirst he who overcomes shall inherit all things and i will be his god and he shall be my son okay uh so he says uh first of all there's a new heaven and a new what and a new earth a new earth okay so the word there is literally firmament Mm-hmm. solid something okay so that in eternity and, and again our picture of heaven is kind of up in the sky somewhere mm-hmm. where we're strumming <laughs> strumming harps 
Uh, and all we're doing and is singing all day long. You know, right? <laughs> and, and kind of, uh, and I've even had people say to me, you know, I know it's going to be great, but it sounds kind of boring. <laughs> right, right. Uh, well, it's a new heaven and a new earth so that um, we'll be both spiritual and physical at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're going to be involved in a new earth of God's creation that, by the way, is a unit with heaven, and we have a whole uh, discussion about that, of uh, that uh, heaven isn't out there. It's really in the same unit that we are. We're in physical, but we're also in the spiritual. We're in heaven and earth at the same time. Um, and so he said, I'm going to create a new heaven and a new earth, uh, which, by the way, means that if there was only a heaven and it was eternal, it would never have required a new one. Uh, mm. So there's a new heaven, you know, mm. so he creates it. Um, and he says, um, uh, God is going to dwell with us. Uh, so we will be, um, uh, it says, uh, our dwelling uh, will be uh, completely aware of, with having a relationship with God himself, God mm-hmm. the Son, God the Father, God the Holy Spirit. We will have eternal relationship with that where it's it's knowable, communicable, uh, beautiful, and experiencing. And he said, and God, verse 4, mm-hmm. will wipe away every what? Every tear. tear. There shall be no more what? Death. No more death. Nor, nor sorrow, sorrow. Nor sorrow. Nor crying. Nor crying. And no more pain. Mm-hmm. Uh, for the former things have passed away. I make all things new. Right. For these words are true and faithful. Uh, okay. So... Um, Something happens as we get to that place. Um, and he says, what normally would have caused you to cry, mm-hmm. be sorrowful, be pained, be grieved. He says, um, I, I, I get rid of it because the former things are past. Mm-hmm. And so there's something that happens where uh, the things of the past, which again, we're carrying with us the good and the bad. We're carrying with right. us the knowledge of these are the mistakes I made or these are the problems they had or these are the situations and the relationships I had with people that I was hoping they would be in, in heaven, but they're not there. Mm-hmm. He says, I believe uh, what happens is that somehow there's uh, basically release of that memory where it's not even conscious. You're not even conscious of Mm. it. Uh, So there's not a possibility to be sorrowful because there's nothing to remind you of that. Right. Um, And it's it's an interesting thing because we are going to recognize each other. That's what I was going to ask. So is that only of the things that would cause you sorrow then? I think so because he says um, uh, he says that um, I'm going to make all things new. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, uh, it implies that uh, because of our soul lasting eternally uh, and this recognizable. So that, mm-hmm. like, for example, um, I don't know if you remember where there was a story where they were asking about Jesus. Um, about um, one guy that dies and Mm -hmm. he says to to Jesus could you please go back and tell my family that I made a mistake because I didn't follow you and I'm in a bad place Mm -hmm. but encourage them to go to the good place Um, could you send Abraham back Mm -hmm. okay well if you're going to send Abraham back, what does that mean about Abraham? Recognizable. Oh, uh, interesting. Huh. Uh, it didn't say just send that amorphous angel back. Right, right. Uh, there they, was an identity to that. Yeah. They, they hmm. know who Abraham is. Okay. And, they'll, and they'll certainly listen to him because they know who he is. Hmm. Uh, and God says, no, uh, your opportunity is during this life. And I've given you plenty of opportunity it doesn't, it's not going to do any good to send somebody from heaven back there to tell them because they won't believe it anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, But there's a recognizable uh, person. And, hmm. and Paul says um, in, in Philippians, he says, uh, to live is, is wonderful, but to die is gain 
because I will be with God, with Christ, mm-hmm. and uh, will recognize him, and he'll recognize me because my, my soul continues on in heaven. So we are going to have recognition of each mm-hmm. other. Uh, and what I think is that it's at a whole new dimension uh, to where uh, there's, there's only joy and wonder and grandeur. And for some reason, the things that would have caused us to be sad and sorrowful are wiped away to the point of it's not conscious of us anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that, you know, did it happen? Yes. Are we aware it happened? No. Right. Um, and our, our only life, because he says, he says there'll be no more sorrow. Uh, there'll, be, there'll be no more crying. There'll be no more pain. All the stuff is, uh, is gone. Death won't be there. Uh, the tears mm-hmm. won't be there. So we can be assured that um, we're going to rejoice completely 100% all the time, every time. And there's no, when the word there, no, means literally Mm -hmm. zero, zip, nothing. It's not kind of, mostly, it's it's completely gone. And if it's completely gone, and my thought is it then has to be gone from our consciousness. Right. Because otherwise, if it was still kind of there, it didn't say, well, you'll learn to deal with it. Right. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Right. Uh, hmm. that you're gonna you're gonna have uh, completeness with it. So I think there's something that happens uh, as we translate up there. And by the way, um, he does say, which is which is he wants our heart now to be what uh, I want you to care uh, mm-hmm. about those that are around you, and I want you to be my messenger. And that's why in Colossians four, by the way, two to six, he says, "Pray for me to open up doors." Mm-hmm. For you to be able to speak the truth in love and respect and answer questions that they have. I'm going to be working to have them uh, be interested. And, and I want you not to take on the burden of it because he said, I'm not asking you to go do anything. I'm asking you to pray for me to mm-hmm. open up doors and then you respond when, and as, I, right. as I so scoot as the he answers. Leads, right. As I so lead. And it's good you have a heart for it because I do. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, God says, and um, keep it up. But when you die, and go to heaven and be with me in eternity. Um, don't don't be con- concerned that it's going to be kind of good, kind of not, mm-hmm. because of what happened here. For some some way, it, it just isn't part of our consciousness anymore. And uh, it's re- it's a remarkable something that happens. And and all we can do is say hallelujah. Uh, we won't be in that place of sadness. We're going to mm-hmm. be only in rejoicing. And by the way, we'll be on earth, which I means I think we're going to be progressing working, creating, do all kinds of cool. I think eternity is going to be really fun, by the way. Mm. So it's Very pretty, cool. pretty cool. I love, even as we look at that passage, I'm reminded you'll, in verse five, it says, you'll write these words, write for these words are true and faithful. Yep. And um, there's another passage in, uh, in John 1 that I was reading earlier today that was just talking about um, um, how Christ is full of, grace and truth. And and I think about that, I think when I look at that word true, a lot of what you're talking about, a lot of what we struggle with is um, at least what I run into when people are talking about heaven and hell and some of the things that they grapple with in that is one, believing that his word is true. Yeah. I think there is a foundational thing that, that people aren't completely sure that what he said is true. You know, and and even in this is the description of heaven. You'll write it down. My words are true and faithful. And by the way, anything that is from Christ, any of his words are true. You know, we're told that throughout the Bible. Um, But it causes this interesting tension I have found with um, one friend I'm thinking of in particular who has struggled over the years uh, um, to really step into her faith. She kind of toys with faith, um, to be honest. And her struggle is that she has a husband and a son who are extremely intellectual and they reject God. And I know from her heart that she feels like if she steps all in and then decides that what the Bible says is true and what is said about heaven and hell is true, then she is essentially condemning that, like in her mind, she is condemning them to something she doesn't wanna believe is what their destiny is. 
Yeah. And so it's a you know it's some difficult wrestling that people deal with, especially when you're you're dealing with um, family members you adore, and your heart is for them. But like Rich said, that praying for those open doors and for the softening of hearts and knowing that if God has placed someone in your circle and given you a true burden for them and for their salvation, um, be willing to be the person who stands in their behalf praying for them and praying for soft heart and asking God to bring people that that come into their life that bring light and to let you speak when he says, hey, I'm moving, you say this now and being willing to do that with love and grace and respect and honor and truth. Right. You know. Yeah, and, and when you uh, you know think about that, um, you said that you know you believe that the truth um, of God is absolute. So that uh, as we're looking even at this passage, mm-hmm. uh, now our experience and the way we think, because right. we're human, is well, if I'm if I'm having somebody that I loved and I cared about. And I was hoping they would they would know Christ, but they don't. Mm-hmm. That means I'm gonna aren't I gonna notice that they're not there, right? And if they're not there, then I know where they are, and mm-hmm. that that would should bring me sadness. And so, are, are we gonna be sad in heaven? Well, okay, now let's go the opposite direction. What does the verse say? No, mm-hmm. no, you're not. Right. Okay, now we got a problem. Um, our thought is, well, oh, you say we're not. But I don't know how that could be. How is that going to work? Mm-hmm. And uh, particularly in light of other things, because we, we know each other in heaven. Uh, we have relationship in heaven. We have intimacy with fellowship and people that we knew. Um, we're going to obviously recognize Christ. Mm-hmm. Uh, we know him. He knows me. Um, I'm going to know. I'm going to be able to talk with Paul. Um, mm-hmm. I'm going to be able to talk with Abraham. That'll be fun. Um, Noah, all that, I'll be able to talk to all those people. So um, how can that be? Mm-hmm. Uh, and he said, well, this is why uh, it's so critical. And it's actually about abiding. So if you go to uh, Proverbs 1, Kathy. Sure. Um, and just read verses uh, 1 through 7, because it kind of lays it out as a beginning point. All right. Proverbs 1, 1 through 7 says, Um, The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, judgment, and equity, to give prudence to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and increase learning, and a man of understanding will attain wise counsel, to understand a proverb and an enigma, the words of the wise and their riddles. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Okay. Uh, so he says if you if you want to get wisdom and, and increase in learning, understanding, uh, life, um, he says the beginning of that is the fear, mm-hmm. of, the fear of the Lord. Right. Uh, okay, the fear of the Lord. Now let's, let's look at what that is. So if you go over to... Um, uh, uh, Proverbs, uh, excuse me, uh, Psalm 19. Uh, go to Psalm 19. Okay. Uh, Psalm and, 19. Re- and read verses 7 through 11. Psalm sure. 19, 7 through 11. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold. Yes, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey in the honeycomb. Moreover, by them your servant is warned, and in keeping with them there is great reward. Okay. Now in the Hebrew, um, they were used to and wrote uh, usually list. Mm-hmm. And so they would say, this is, this is all similar or connected, and I'm going to provide you a list that all relate to the same thing. Uh, so okay. he's given a list here. Uh, the, Lord, the law of the Lord is perfect. Testimony of the Lord is sure. Statutes of the Lord are right. The commandments are pure. The judgments are right and true. Um, okay, so that list is basically what God says 
because they're all relating to the same thing. Mm -hmm. The law, the testimony, the statutes, the commandments, the judgments. Right. What God says is absolutely true. Mm -hmm. You can trust it and there's purity to it and there's righteousness to it and it's right. uh, sure and it's gonna make you wise and it's right. Okay, so he gives that list. Well, in the middle of it is verse nine. The fear of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So what he's saying is, I'm going to help you define what the fear of the Lord is. It's mm. it's what God says is true. Um, mm. He just listed it and said it's 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 the same as everything else. Is that mm. um, what God says is true? So if you fear the Lord, and that's why he says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That's really knowing and understanding that what he says is true. And I've settled it as a beginning point. Mm, that's uh, great. That what God says is true. And now what I do is, uh, because of spiritually, remember, and this is uh, in 1 Corinthians 2, uh, you can't figure this out logically. Mm -hmm. you, no eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared to disclose because it's spiritually discerned. Mm -hmm. And he said, um, if you're walking in the flesh, verse 14 in Second Corinthians, First Corinthians 2, you consider it foolishness. Right. Okay, so just like we just went through that verse, and it says, well, there's no tears, no sorrow, no pain, no nothing in heaven. And I, if in the logic, we would say, that seems kind of not true. Right. That seems foolishness, because I don't see how that's going to work. If we have relationship and we remember people, Aren't we going to remember those that aren't there? And that's not, isn't that going to cause sorrow? Mm -hmm. Logical conclusion, right? But what did it say? There isn't any. Right. Okay. Um, so so we have to defer to the truth. <laughs> the fear of the Lord, see, is to work backwards. Mm -hmm. um, and that is that, okay, it says there's no, there's no sorrow, no grief, mm -hmm. no, no, no tears. Okay. If I fear the Lord, what do I say about that verse? I say that is true. It's true. Even if I don't understand it. Okay, so I say it's true, but I don't understand what it is, how it works, what does that mean, how does that translate, uh, it seems confusing to me, or it, does, it seems opposite of what would seem natural. So my, my pursuit, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of what? Mm -hmm. wisdom. Of wisdom. Okay, what does that mean? Um, well. I start with, okay, it's true, mm -hmm. but I don't know how it's true. Right. The beginning, that's the beginning. Mm -hmm. And now what do I do? Father? We're invited into a process. Help me understand him. that. Help me, yeah. help me uh, get some clarity on that. Help me get some wisdom about this. And I'm going to stay with it, stay with it, stay with it until it starts to come together for me. Uh, and, it, and it can go deeper and deeper, deeper, just like as I, pr I process that question. And uh, what I've heard so far is that... Um, First of all, it's real. Your, your mm -hmm. place in heaven is real. Uh, you are who you are. Uh, you'll recognize other people. But, and he says, you know, Rich, and this is how I process it, as I'm trying to, okay, what does that mean? How does that work? He said, well, if it's not there, think about what that means. Well, and I processed it and prayed about it and thought about it and, and, and journaled about it. And that means I said, well, then we must not have any remembrance of it. He hmm. said, exactly. Okay, how does that work? I've made old, I've, I've had old things pass away. How does that work? You're not gonna know that until you get there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you can see, okay, all right. That's true, that's true, that's true. I still don't have the final answer. Right. Uh, and, and he says, remember as we're pushing for it, and I'm pushed for it, mm -hmm. uh, son, it's beyond you. Right. And, and you, some things we will only know in part. Right and you now. won't know, you can't know mm -hmm. until you get there. All, all you can recognize is it's true and you don't have any consciousness of it by definition. Mm. That's, all I, that's all I can tell. Right. You. Okay. All right. Um, and what I don't do is say, well, I doubt it. Mm -hmm. The fear of the Lord is no, I accept it. I need to walk into as far as I can. What does it mean to me? And even even stop at a certain point. You know, like for example, you and I have talked about the rapture. Well, I'd like to know when it's going to be. Mm -hmm. He says, 
what does the word say? It's going to happen. <laughs> okay? Does it tell you when? Not exactly. Nope. <laughs> well, then I'm not telling you. Don't worry about it. Um, mm -hmm. And don't, don't play your own stuff on it. Um, the fear of the Lord is I can go as far as I can go. And then beyond that, he says, I purposely haven't said something about it because you're not ready for it and or I don't want you to learn it yet. You got a whole eternity to learn it. Don't worry. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so it's it's going to be a beautiful thing. So I think it's a great discussion, you know, that you raised yeah, up about. Great question. I'm glad somebody brought that sent uh, that in. Well, and it's a great discussion. What you brought about it is that where do we stand on believing the truth of God? And and you mm -hmm. and he wrote it. I'm telling you, John, it's absolutely true, faithful. Yeah. Write it down. Write it down. And state <laughs> it, and make everybody understand. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely there. And, they, yeah. and I know they're going to struggle with this, but at least start there. So that's the fear of the Lord. Yeah. So that'll Beautiful. be that'll be a great discussion. So we'll pick it up again uh, uh, tomorrow and and pick up more of this issue of uh, what it means to, you know, live in the covenant. Sounds great. Thanks so much, and thank you for joining us, everyone. Have a blessed afternoon. Yep. Yeah. See you soon. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Come and See, your podcast for truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. Send us your questions and comments and tune in tomorrow for more answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. Remember, God's will is best and none better. His truth brings peace in this world of chaos.